All right, here's part two of our podcast with Daniel Wu. So you guys did the Honda um, and took it to SEMA. Was that what happened? Yeah, here. Here it is. Hold on. Here's the back end of it. Oh, Ooh, yeah, here's, exactly. here's the Honda. Hold oh, on. Let me get to the front. So yeah, we built this for SEMA. We were How originally going to we were originally going to be in the Toyo Tread Pass area, and then Honda found out about the build, and they wanted me they wanted it to be in, in their booth to celebrate the seventh anniversary of Honda in in America. So that's, that's where I ended up. Nice. How did that go down? Um, it was cool because my goal was like, okay, SEMA. How do you? There's so many cars at SEMA. How do you make an impact? Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, everything is like a muscle car done to like singer style quality. Now $300,000, you know, pumped in and they're all big, beautiful muscle cars with modern engines and everything. Okay. What can I do? It's the opposite. <laughs> I'm going to choose this tiny little Japanese car that never made it to the States. That it's a Japanese car that looks like a European car. Yeah. Um, it looks like no one, yeah. It looks like an MG or something, right? Like the front here looks like a, looks like an MG. Um, and choose a car that no one's ever seen before and that'll probably drop some jaws at, at SEMA and that's what happened so we put it at the booth and like my favorite part of SEMA was like standing back like away from everybody and watching people's reactions when they came around the corner and saw this tiny little baby <laughs> car you know <laughs> it's just funny to see like huge reactions for something so diminutive in size yeah Oh, yeah, here's a little look. Like, we did this one fully out, you know, everything. Wow. So and some, nice. which one was the, you took a car to see though, right? Yeah, I took a 240Z, the, the Fuguzi, a, a 73 240Z, and then... Uh, so, and how did that go over with the car people there, with you guys being actors? Like, did that impede them looking at your car? Did that, like, make them think that you weren't one of them or like how was your guys' experience with people at Super? Well, I'll start with that. I, well, I think, uh, well, when I, it was, it was twofold. The majority of um, the car community was super welcoming, right? So they were happy that somebody was celebrating this, you know, J JDM classic that, didn't have a lot of eyes on it, you know, at the time, you know, it's kind of disappearing from, you know, the, I guess the zeitgeist and then, boy, uh, did you change that? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think because, because of just, you know, my association with fast and, you know, the, the connection with the cars, I think it brought in a whole bunch of, you know, eyes to the project. Right. So it, it became this reawakening, this awareness back to this, you know, beautiful classic 240z but then you know what i've learned that you know the humans are humans right and people are territorial and they're cliquish and then it's easy to say that hey you got a free pass because you're an actor and if you were an actor nobody would have cared about your car and you didn't build the car and you, you're not a renter and you, you just paid you know you bought it instead of build it it's all of these things that i you know learned that in the car community like yeah just like in my business of Hollywood or in life, there's going to be criticism. There's going to be negativity. There's going to be questioning. And then it made me step back and reflect and go, well, you know, is there, is there truth to that? And I'm, and I'm always going to admit, you know, to where I feel like, you know, did I get a free pass? Absolutely. And I'm the guy from fast. I play Han. Sure. You know, of course, you know, that, of course I get a, a you know, a, a a, fr a free seat at the table just by association. Am I a renter? Did I build the car myself? No, I didn't do any of that. And, and, and I'm very aware of giving credit to, you know, the, 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 the great talented people that put their hands on these cars that spend their whole life mastering it. So it made me step back and go, oh, as an actor, if I'm going to participate in this community, I better respect it and I better know to a degree, what I'm talking about in terms of the hierarchy and the investment and the passion put into it. And if there is a negative reaction, instead of being reactive and being negative, because I don't, you know, the, the, the car business or the hobby of car making is not my livelihood. It's just a hobby. So 
you know, either way I can, I'm, I'm fine without it. So if I'm going to be a part of it, I need to support it and contribute. And if there's a negative reaction, I want to have a conversation about it, you know, and I, w I would get, you know, a lot of times I would get a lot of shit. I remember I went to a Cars and Coffee and I asked some guy about, you know, the Audi R8 and, you know, the manual, sh the gated shifter and the different options. And then I thought it was a, just a great morning of sharing information. And I fell in love with that car. And eventually I actually went and got one. But then after I found out, and I read on some forum, and he was saying that, yeah, I met some, the guy with the, the, the 240 thing. And, you know, and this guy, we're talking about cars and he doesn't know anything. He's like talking to like a, you know, dumb like log. And this guy, it's like, he just wasted my time. And I was going, wow. I, I took it as like a great, like, you know, day of sharing. And this guy took it as like, you're in, you know, you're in my territory, man. Like you're trying to take my, you know, you're invading my space. And then it hurt. And then I got angry. And then some friends knew him and they're like, hey, we're going to talk to him. And I said, no, let me try this approach. And I, so I wrote an email and I said, I apologize. I apologize for offending him. And I thanked him for giving me that information. I told him that he inspired me to buy this car. But, you know, and that, that approach led to him actually responding to me and him going, I reflected on that experience and dude, I'm fucked up. You know, I'm sorry I did that. And I will support like, you know, you know, making a positive contribution to these, you know, to the car community get togethers. And it, 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 he said, Hey man, I live in like a, a high testosterone world of guys trying to go fast and competing. And we're all trying to, you know, stake our claim in this car world. And I, I, it, it made me realize where I could be an ambassador, you know? So that was my experience. So I had to step away for a while, Daniel, you know, it's like, I'm glad, you know, you know, there was another actor to kind of fill the void and like do awesome builds because dude, like going every, every build makes me super nervous because I know I'm going to piss people off. I know I'm going to be attacked. I, you know, it's, it's a part, it's a, it's, it's like you're giving birth to, you know, a baby and then you're going to get all these haters. And then at the end of the day, you know, is it going to be well received? And now I'm at a place where I don't care, man, it's the journey. And even if people are going to talk shit and if I have to take some, you know, if I have to bite, you know, I have to take some bullets, it's all good, man, because I know why I'm doing this. And now there's clarity is that I don't care about the end result. I don't care about how expensive or how many pictures are taken or how many likes. It's really the people that I get to hang out with, the people mm. like, you know, the, the great experiences that I have, all the laughs, all the, all the late nights and the little jokes and the little inside jokes. Like, you know, the conversation about the V8 swaps today, come on, right? That's, yeah. that's the journey, man. So that's where, that's where I am today with this whole thing. You know? I'm glad to hear that you come back because you, you, your build inspired me to do it. Like do all this stuff, like your Fuguzi. When I saw you do it, because I've been thinking about it for years, but I was like, I had all those same thoughts. It's like, oh, I'm going to come in, everyone's going to be a hater, and I don't want to do it, and blah, blah. And then I saw you do it, and I'm like, oh, man. And you did it amazing. And I'm like, okay. And that's when I reached out to you. I was like, hey, so how did you do this? And blah, 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 blah. And then it slowly became a reality. And then, you know, what I realized is like, yeah, if you're passionate and humble, it's fine. Like everything's yeah. fine. You know, yeah. uh, everyone yeah. will be, the, the, the people you want to hang out with anyway will be receptive to you anyway. Sorry, right. guys, what were you going to say? Oh, it's, a lot of people forget that it is about individuality and it's not a competition. There's room for everybody. There's room for all different kinds of thought and designs and everything. It's not about who's better than another. It's about everybody being in the car world together. Yeah, there's so many ways to skin a cat and there's so many ways to build a car and they're all right in their own way. And yeah. uh, people's perception of how things should be is usually what ruins it. When it's like yeah, not their build, not their car, not their style, who gives a shit? Like, yeah. <laughs> if you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you can't even uh, respect the work that was put into it, then just keep them out shit, kind of. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Totally. Totally. It, I mean, the car world, the car community is a reflection of, you know, the human condition. You know, when, you know, when someone looks at another car and they go, you know, stupid Mustang or stupid German car, or stupid JDM, I go, where is that coming from? Like, and they mean it, like they get mad, you know, like, yeah. or like a Mopar guy. Tribal, they get about tribal like, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, right. Yep. And, and, and just so, that. yeah, but Jess, where do you think that comes from? Like, why? Do people get so tribal with their cars? You know, um, like it's so. Dad and I literally just talked about this because he watched your video from the other day. Um, anyhow, we were talking about it, and he feels like, um, how did you put this? It's a part of our fight or flight. So coming together tribally in your separate tribes against one another is how you fight. And unfortunately, that's how it is, and it just doesn't end up working out for everybody. So mm. it ends up with a lot of hate, a lot of um, distrust of other people, which really sucks. <laughs> really sucks. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, because I know you guys were talking about how a lot of people are wary and hateful towards Asians, which I think is utterly stupid. But um, it is a thing, and it sucks. But again, fight or flight thing. It's a car thing. It's a human thing. It's unfortunately a race thing, and people just can't just can't let it go when it doesn't matter. But they're trying to protect themselves, which it's just like a snake. It feels threatened. It bites. I mean, they can pretend yeah. to love. I mean, when you put it that way, it's, 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 you can understand it. You know, it's like, it's a defense mechanism. People are afraid, you know, yeah. they don't have an answer. So what do they need to do? They need to fight. They need to blame somebody, you know? So back to Daniel and Seema, you heard Sung's, <laughs> Sung's experience. What was your experience with the people? It's, um, it's amazing. Like, my first SEMA was with, hold on here, let me switch to this car, was with this car, the Datsun 510. Damn. And I was really intimidated at first because I was like, I, you know, I had some different ideas and I had different things that people hadn't really done with cars before, like all the chrome there is bronze and stuff like that. And so I wasn't sure what the reaction was going to be like. Um, but people were so loving and so receptive. And then that broke down all barriers. Like it broke down all barriers. There's no race, sex or whatever. It's like you have initial gut reaction to something you like visually. You see it and you react and it doesn't matter where you're from or whatever. You just like it, you know? And so that I found really freeing. And, and, you know, we do say, you know, we're just talking about how there's so much judgment and blah, blah, blah. But when you do something, execute something well, a lot of people respect it. And whether they're muscle car guys, American car guys, European car guys, like they see it and they react. And then you look at their work and you react the same way. It's like there was a level of respect there that I thought was really cool. I mean, there's tons of other baloney there and a lot of other stuff. But like in general, what I was, I felt was like, oh, this is really cool. Like this is a really cool time. I understand why everyone looks forward to SEMA because it's the one time everyone in the whole world or country can get together and just like stew in cars for a week, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's exhausting. Have you guys been? No, no, we want to go so bad. <laughs> Man, so oh. like, hey, we got to all meet there. We all yeah, gotta we got to go. It, yeah, you need you can't do it in a day for sure, and oh, no. even a week is even hard. But like uh, the last last year when I went, I had a Fitbit on, and um, our booth was at the very end of Hall One, so there was a lot of walking back and forth, and also I had to go get friends at the front and bring them in and blah blah. And in four days, I walked twenty seven miles. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you walk Marathon. a lot there's so yeah. much to see like and i this time like the last the first time i went i made an effort to try and see everything but this time i was like i had to like cut it all down because it's just too much there's way too much um but i remember the first time you know the bro trucks sung <laughs> the what the bro trucks the bro tr uh -uh. The, those that? big trucks that are jacked up like six feet high and like a, uh -huh. uh, yeah. you know 38 inch wheel but with like one inch of tire Wall around. They call them bro trucks. That's the name. I think bro. so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. That's what bro they were truck? calling them there. 
I didn't oh, realize like how big a culture that was. Like oh, it's halls huge. of that, full okay. halls full of that, right? And then this year wow. even like they were all out in front. There's like, you know, at least 50 to 100 of them out in front. It was crazy. So oh, yeah, wow. there's a whole bunch of things that yeah. I didn't even know were a thing um, yeah. are there. So everything you can imagine for cars is there. It's all there, you know, foreign cars, American cars, uh, crazy electric conversions, like everything, it's all there. Everything that anyone's ever wanted to do with a car is, is there, it's fun, it's really fun. But it's tiring, it's exhausting. Did you get any um, feedback from people like some did about being a, a shoe-in because you're an actor? Or, was, or backlash, I guess would be the right word. Yeah, I went in like super humble and didn't try to pretend like I knew anything, right? So yeah. all I did was just answer questions when people came up to the car. I didn't even try to make my presence known. So I kind of stood, stood back all the time. So it was, I felt it was nice to me. I didn't feel that kind of judgment, although there is, obviously, there is. So it's like, but I think also what where I got some respect was like, people are like, oh, you're, you know, a movie star. You could buy a Lambo or, or you know, some ready-made super supercar. And you didn't, and you you chose this really bizarre, obscure car and spent eight months building it. So there was just a level of respect there, you know, from that. And I think that was the cool thing about it. It's like this is the thing I was talking about. It's like the tribalness breaks down when there's a shared passion. You know, right. when everyone sees the effort that was made, and everyone understands how much effort was made into it, put into it. Um, uh, you know, all those barriers drop. So I, you know, I didn't feel. I'm sure there is. There is still like people talking crap and blah, 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 but I didn't really feel it. It usually always is. You can't get away from it. Yeah. I mean, there's haters everywhere. All right. Join us for part three, where we talk about xenophobia happening during the pandemic. Also, Jess and Megan share their experience as females in the car community. All right. Y'all be good.